Jesus, Lord, and Redeemer. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Today, remember three uh, martyrs. Remember uh, St. Nereus and Achaeus. And they were martyred in the, just the beginning of the second century. And then St. Pancras was martyred uh, in the middle of the fourth century. Both were beheaded by two different emperors. As we prepare for this most holy and sacred of all celebrations, let us pause calling to mind our sins. And so we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who know the great courage of the glorious martyrs Darius, Achaeus, and Pancras in confessing you may experience their loving intercession for us in your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath day, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent word to them, my brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out, and for about 45 years he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, <clears throat> according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing this, his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. 
Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. and freed us from our sins by your blood. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I'm not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen, but so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives me, the one I send receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one whom sent me, who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I marvel at the bravery of those early martyrs. I marvel at how well-spoken the early disciples were. And, you know, I think you and I know as much, if not more, than they do. I think the one thing that they had was time. They walked Everywhere they went, with the exception of those times that Paul oftentimes would take a ship from one place to another. But think of all that time. It was not a time filled with music. It was an odd time looking on a cell phone and being uh, worried and looking at all the, the stuff that's going on in the world and what's going on in our own country and so on and so forth. They had time to basically sit to think, to give praise to God every moment of every day, to talk and encourage one another as a people of faith, to bask in the love of Jesus Christ every moment of every day. Even though he did not walk with them, literally he walked with them every moment in spirit and they knew it. And to encourage one another, to embolden one another, 
to celebrate, to even celebrate martyrdom. And they did so because they knew it was to build up the church of God. You and I are, have lives that are oftentimes cluttered by a lot of noise, a lot of noise. I was thinking to myself when I got up uh, this morning, I did prayers, and, um, and then I looked at my, my phone to see what the, news, the latest news was. And, you know, uh, if you want to start the day depressed, you do that. <laughs> I suggest that before we ever even do that, that we come to church first before we ever look at anything that our news has to give us, before we even look at any, and listen to music or whatever, that, or whatever it is, whatever radio station or whatever television station we turn into, that we choose not to do that at the beginning of the day. That we at least begin the, the day in silence, thinking in Gretch and how grateful we are for all that God has given us, thinking about what our favorite scripture passage is that helps to embolden us in our lives, to think about the gifts that we have in our family and our close friends, to think about the things that have drawn us to God in the first place and what that turning point was for us that said, this is why God matters in my life. This is what, who I am. This is my story with Jesus Christ. This is my story that I have to tell the world. And I also know the story that is given to me by my ancestors, and I know the story that is given to me in sacred scripture. Because you and I are truly brothers and sisters of Paul. We are truly brothers and sisters of the saints that we remember today. And they, in a very real way, are our ancestors. And we need to know them and we need to understand their fervor for Christ our Lord. And we need to bask in everything that we are and all that God has given to us. And to remind ourselves of the rich history of who we are in Jesus Christ. And in all of that, and in all the troubles that are going on in the world today, to, re, to begin to think about how would we address somebody if they began to talk to us about their rights of abortion and to tell them, no, no, let me tell you of one who has given you life and the hope and promise of everlasting life. And if you do not know him, I will show you someone that will, that, that's not just about this life, but life that is for eternity, a life that is beyond this world. And to begin to, to invite them to that because they do not know this. They do not, many of them do not know this. And for those who reject it, we can say, but you do not know the full story. Do you not know him that he, that he knew you before you were ever conceived in your mother's womb? That he knew you before you ever took your first breath? That he desired to understand who you were and to love you beyond all measure, even when you chose to speak out against him and his precepts and his love. This is not about the church. This is about the Jesus Christ who gave his life on the altar of the cross so that you and I might have everlasting life, so that you might have life eternal, so that you might have life in abundance here on earth and the fullness of life forever in heaven. We know these things, but many of them do not know. All they know is the church, and the church is oftentimes the one that they end up speaking about. But understand, they don't even know that this, this church belongs to the God who gave us life in the first place that was established on Jesus Christ. And yes, on Peter's, Peter's pro proclamation of faith. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the world will not, will not tear it down. We are the church. Yes, we have a hierarchy, and something may happen in Rome someday. But we have to re realize that the people of God are the church. And we have an understanding of who we are beyond so many other people. And to be able to bask in that understanding and to be able to spend time with it so that when we are confronted, that we may talk back in a way that is not confrontative, but inviting. And I spoke about this a little bit the other day. 
but in light of all those who are brothers and sisters in Christ, in light of all the martyrs who have gone before us, standing firm in the gift of their faith, it is because of martyrdom that the church spread like wildfire in throughout Rome and the surrounding area. It is because of martyrdom that the church spread like wildfire in Africa. And that is why the people in Guatemala and Santiago Adatlan also that the news of Jesus Christ spread like wildfire after the martyrdom of our own, our own patron. Uh, and so may we who understand who we are lift that and stop, begin the day in silence to soak up all that God has given us in the richest of our own history and to be able to speak boldly about that and to pray about it and say, Lord, my life belongs to you. Guide me that I might guide others, that they too may know you and come to love you and come to believe that there's so much more beyond this life than they could possibly imagine. Help me to speak with sensitivity, but also with a sense of boldness to those who do not understand and are errant in their ways. That we may seize the day and they too may come to, with great relish, come to know that it is the church of God and his people that makes a difference. It is the church of God in her beliefs that helps to make the difference. It is the church of God that has managed to persevere over these 2,000 years that continues to invite people beyond their, their misunderstandings, invite people beyond their ignorance to a different way of life. You and I are immersed in this, but by our immersion in the morning, by our immersion in silence, by our immersion in prayer, we come to a greater awareness in that silence that we have a mission in life and that mission is to change people's hearts and understanding about Christ who is the Lord and the Lord of life. We bring our needs before the Most High God, trusting in his generous love. For the church, may each one of us be blessed and strengthened in our life of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the leaders of our communities and governments. May the Lord make his presence known to them as they carry out their duties. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who struggle with despair or doubt. May the Spirit bring them confidence and hope in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here at St. John the Baptist and those who may be visiting today, may the Lord help us to grow in reverence and awe, particularly for the gift of the Blessed Sacrament, which feeds us spiritually in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. May they soon rest in the sleep of peace in our heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of Nathaniel Boyd, for whom this Mass is offered, one of our seminarians, for his perseverance in his time in the seminary, as he hopefully looks forward to priesthood here in the archdiocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have all those prayers we offer before the Blessed Sacrament in adoration, and for our own private petitions we now bring forth in silence. We pray in a special way for our Pope Francis and for all those who lead us and teach us in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wonder and might, receive these prayers offered by your humble servants and grant them as you see fit through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this gift of bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we receive this gift of wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the good of all this holy church. In honor of the precious death of your just ones, O Lord, we come to offer that sacrifice from which all martyrdom draws its origin, to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, come with paschal joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise. And the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles, the beloved patrons of this place, St. John the Baptist, St. Elizabeth Ann Seden, and Blessed Stanley Rother, the martyrs on whom we recognize today, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, misere reino hobis. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Amen. Like Christ. Blood of Christ. Blood of Christ. Life 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 of Christ. By Christ. Amen. By Christ. 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 Amen. By Christ. 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 By Christ.
Let us pray our St. Michael prayer together. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We also need to pray for Pope Francis. He evidently is not doing well um, because of an infection he's been dealing with. So I ask you to keep that in your mind as well and in your prayers. I hate these towels that are half cotton and polyester. They don't get anything out of these cups. It's like having some kind of a squeegee in there. Just Let us pray. Our prayer after communion. Bring out our joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for the upright. Alleluia as we celebrate by this divine banquet the heavenly victory of your blessed martyrs. We beseech you, Lord, to bestow victory on those who, who eat here below of the bread of life and to allow them to eat as victors from the tree of life in paradise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May every blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go proclaim the gospel by our lives. Thanks be to God. Lord.